I'm live. It says I'm live. I'm alive again. I am hope that you're back with me. Um, yeah. What an unfortunate incident. So, um, yeah. IOL Pub Quiz Part 2, and there's nobody joining us. Nobody joining us. Um, so let's see if, if you join us in a while. There we go. There's one or two people coming back on board. Um, terrible, that. Completely, um, I did say, um, I, I said this. I said, Houston, we have a problem. And we had to do all sorts of stuff. And we seen, hello, Catherine. Hello, Catherine. Hello, and a couple of other people are back with us. Wow. That was very weird. I hope it doesn't happen again. It's the first time it's ever happened um, since we've been doing this quiz, and it's been over a month now. So, uh, yeah. Um, sorry about that. We are here, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you. People are slowly coming back. And we had to do all sorts of stuff here to try and try and find our way. So what we will do, we'll probably have to shorten the questions, maybe only go to uh, 30 so that we can circumvent the fact that we were off air for quite a while, quite a few minutes. I, I humbly apologize. Um, still prefer a tin can with a piece of string and one end and you do that because then you know what's going on. So I see little numbers gradually climbing back up. So I, I'm glad that you are back. So what we're going to do is carry on. Hey, Cheryl. Um, Denise, yes, it was you, Denise. It was all your fault. We've actually, we've decided that. Was it? No, it wasn't. Um, I'm going to continue, but I'm going to cut down the number of questions. So we will only do 30 tonight or even 25. So they're sorry about that. Um, let's hope that's the end of it for tonight. Question was, what was the longest ever cricket test played? That was the question. And next question, an easier one. Those of you who are joining us here, yeah, gradually getting back again. Um, what war was called the war to end all wars? The war to end all wars. Which war was that? It wasn't, unfortunately, but um, that's what people call it. Back to the movies. Hello, everybody getting back there slowly. Um, back to the movies. The, the movie called The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel. What? Where was it? Where was the hotel? Where was it? Where was the best exotic Marigold Hotel. Loved that movie. Really did it. And the sequel. Great fun. Some brilliant acting. Gradually, the people are coming back. I'm so pleased. I really am. Really pleased. And I'm sorry we lost you, and I'm hoping that we don't lose you again. So the question number, um, yes, number 16 was, where was the best exotic Marigold Hotel? Question number 17, what is a dreadnought? What is a dreadnought? And there, there are two options here. Um, I'll leave it to you. What is a dreadnought? You can give me either one. You can't get two. What number is war? What number is war? What number is, you see the problem, we, I, I think we might have lost one or two questions. Uh, was, no, was question number 15. Question number 15. And then uh, oh, question 18. We're on now, Denise. Are you with us? Getting back there. Um, Question number 18, and this one I also thought I knew. It's a foodie one. It's about pasta. Pasta, and you get spaghetti, linguine, tagliatelle, and then you get penne. What in English does, or what does penne pasta mean and why? What does penne pasta mean and why? And I got it wrong. So, question number 19. Oh, talking about spaghetti and things pasta based. Who played the man with no name in what were called the spaghetti western movies? The spaghetti westerns. Who played main character, man with no name? Question number 20. Oh, oh of course, we still got to give you the answers. Question number 20. Which armies fought the American War of Independence? And be careful here. Excuse me. 
Just listen to the question carefully. Which armies fought the American War of Independence? I immediately thought it was something, and I was wrong. So shall we bounce through those answers quickly, or shall we have a quick rapid fire? I think let's have a quick rapid fire. Then we're going to make noise for the people at 8 o'clock, and then we will come back and see how we do. All right. That will get back into the swing of things. Rapid fire. Numbers are growing again. Yeah, people are coming back. I'm so glad. So glad you didn't run away. So rapid fire. And now you can write your answers in the chat column. All of those of you who attempted earlier. I don't see Annika here anymore. She's probably still pouring water down the plug. Question number one. And here you can write the answers over there, and then I can see them. Question one. Who, what is the name of Jamie Oliver's wife? What is her name? Kids call her mom. Jamie Oliver calls her by her name. What is her name? Jamie Oliver's wife. What is her name? Bella. Jenny. Nope, not yet. Swazi Bond. No, is nobody going to get this one? I'm going to have to count it down. Jenny? Jenny? Kathy Stanley got it right. It is Jules. Jules. Jamie's wife. Next question. Geographical. Michelle got it now. Mrs. Naked Chef. Quite right. Then DOA, you can get half a point for that because I'm sure she's called that often by people both outside and inside her home on occasions. Juliet Morton. Nasley. Wow. You know the whole thing. This is a wondrous thing. Wondrous indeed. Question number two, quickly in rapid fire. Where will you find Sosus Flay? In what country will you find the Sosus Flay? Question number three, quickly, because we're going to make noise now. Which iconic rock and roll performer died this week, earlier this week, at the age of 88? So uh, which iconic rock and roller passed away this week? Namibia, mm -hmm. Cathy. Yes, it is indeed. Um, which iconic rock and roll singer? Little Richard. Yes. Question number four. Who wrote Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Who wrote Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? And can you hear the noise outside? It's that time again. It's eight o'clock on the dot. We're going to go. And we're going to say to everybody, join in, clap, shout, do what you want. Trudy got it right. Roll doll. <laughs> Roll doll did right, Charlie. Talk. And to those people in the essential services, well done. And thank you, thank you, thank you once again. Rolled a doll did right. In. And last of this half of the rapid fire, rapid error. Last question. In what series of books will you find the character Cuthbert Calculus? Cuthbert Calculus or Professor Calculus. We've had links to this before. We've had links to this before. So, Harry Potter? No, it's not Harry Potter. They're illustrated books. Will that help you? They were written, they were put together in the um, late 50s and 60s. Tintin, of course, Kathy. Wow. You guys are getting, getting too sharp. We're going to have to we're going to have to make these questions a lot harder, I think. So there we are. No, it's um, it is Tintin on my face, still to this day. So there we are. We've made noise, and yet noise. If it's going on in the background, I'm sure you don't mind because all those deserving people of our <clears throat> thanks and our praises for being in the essential services and, and helping us along the way. So we ask you. Questions 10 to 20. Did we not answer? We didn't answer them, though. Ooh. You have to go through them quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. And we might only get to, um, to 25 or 30 tonight rather than 40. So question number 10, 11. Which was the first 3D color movie? Um, so we're back to not answering on, on the chat column, guys. 3D Color movie. I thought it was, you know, 1960s or 70s. 1953, a Hammer horror movie called House of Wax. Pass away. April the 10th, 1953, Vincent Price, the first color 3D movie ever shown in movie houses. We do our noise in Randburg at 7 p.m. Are we wrong? 
never wrong, Rod. Um, I'm not quite sure why. We do it at eight. Maybe that's how long it takes for people in Cape Town to, to wake up. I'm in Cape Town, so not knocking Cape Townians. Um, I'm not sure, Rod. I'll try and find out for you with pleasure. But you're still doing it, so that's fine. Question number 12. Which famous performer always had a candelabra on his piano? That would have been Liberace. Liberace. Question number 13. The smartest invertebrate. Smartest invertebrate is an octopus. And they show you this at uh, some of the um, aquariums, that an octopus can be taught to open a jar that has its food inside it, and I have witnessed that. So they work out that the food's inside something, and they work out that they can open it. And that's why they are the smartest invertebrate in the world, in the sea. Longest cricket match ever played? Interesting thing was, it was in South Africa. In history, it was in South Africa, long time ago, 1939. It's called the Endless Test. It was played between South Africa and England. The match included nine days of play spread over 12 days due to torrential rain. They played on and on and on. Those days, you played until both innings had been complete. So, and they were called, it was called the Timeless Test. And at the end of the day, didn't even have... Didn't, Catherine, you're a Cape Townian. Yeah. I know, I'm a Cape Townian. Yes, here I am. This is Cape Town. So I wasn't knocking Cape Town. I was just sort of saying, you know, that old mountain trippy type thing that people associate Cape Townians with. It's all of it. So the timeless test took played played for nine days. Um, and yes, they, well, they say they can predict football scores. Scores? Um, we will see. Paul the Octopus, that's right. Um, so nine days of play spread over 12 days due to torrential rain. At the end, it was declared a draw because the English couldn't me miss their boat home. So they had to stop playing because the English team had to catch the boat all the way home. Fun stuff. And how many games are still rained out at the moment is unbelievable. Question number 15. What war was named the war to end all wars? And unfortunately, that wasn't the truth. It was the First World War, World War I, 1914 to 1918. And because of the absolute devastation of what it did to mankind, people thought that would be enough to wake us all up and say, enough of wars now. It didn't work out. Um, no. Question number 16. In what Indian city will you find, or would you have found if you watched it, the best exotic marigold hotel that is in Jaipur, or in the movie, it's in Jaipur. Uh, in fact, the place that they used wasn't in Jaipur anyway. So, But there, great movie. If you haven't seen it, another one to put on your list. Question number 17, what is a dreadnought? What is a dreadnought? And you have two choices here. One that's sort of more historical and the other one more contemporary. And for that, I will take a sip of this beverage. A dreadnought is um, a ship, it's a fighting ship, a, a warship, a battleship. Uh, and they were first commissioned in uh, 1906, and you still had dreadnoughts. They were massive ships with huge guns and faster engines. It was to try and give the advantage by having these huge ships, warships out there. Um, and they don't build dreadnoughts anymore, but they, they did in both world wars and even beyond. Um, Bigger guns, faster engines, more people. It still kills people, you know, which really doesn't, doesn't excite me at all. The alternative and the more pleasant um, explanation of what is a dreadnought, a dreadnought is a style of acoustic guitar. There's a particular physical size. It's large. I had one. Um, made by different manufacturers, so it, it's not a, uh, a brand name. It's a, it's a large acoustic guitar. It's also known as a dreadnought. Question number, oh, we're at 18. We asked about the pasta. Yes, Catherine, it was a sh they were ships, warships. You know. Penne, when it comes to pasta, spaghetti, tagliatelli, and penne, why is it called penne? Uh, and then when I saw the answer, I was actually a little bit embarrassed. Um, penne 
is not an Italian word that other people have to know. It's actually an English word which the Italians use to explain the pasta. If you look at penne, it looks a lot like the nib on the end of a fountain pen. Pen, pen, penne. Seems so simple when you get told, doesn't you? I have thought of all sorts of wonderful fancy ideas for that, and I didn't get it right. And staying with things spaghetti, there was a series of westerns, um, I think the late 60s, yes, probably. They were called spaghetti westerns, and they brought uh, the, the actor who played the role, the title role, to, to lots of fame, and he's still around, a great movie director, actor, who played the man with no name, the central character. That was, of course, Clint Eastwood, the man with no name, moody and, yeah, had to be Clint. Question number 20, which armies fought against one another in the American War of Independence? I immediately was thinking, all oh, Confederates and Unionists and so forth. I realized that wasn't the American War of Independence. That was the American Civil War. American War of Independence was fought between the American people, the American armies, and the British Army, because, of course, yeah. So historically, not doing well tonight. I wasn't, but I've learned something. Let's go on, though, um, and see how far we get. Question number 21. What does a cappella mean? We've had penne and spaghetti and all sorts of things. That's good. What does a cappella mean? It's not a food that I can't tell you. What does a cappella mean? Question number 21. Question 22. Oh, here's one also. What is a hurdy-gurdy? What is a hurdy-gurdy? A hurdy-gurdy-gurdy-gurdy. Frozen again, Trudy? Not that I can see because I'm still active here. No, no, still not, not frozen again. I, I think, guys, that again, like we had a week ago, there are so many people online at the moment that we can run into these sort of problems. So, Trudy, I think it's you at the moment. Sorry. What is a hurdy-gurdy? And I can tell you this. It's not that big thing that you jump onto at a fun fair. That's an adapted name. But this is what the original hurdy-gurdy was all about. Here's one about pets, animals. Um, and it's about a particular type of cat. I want to know what it's called. It's a domestic cat, and it's known for the fact that it's born without a tail. Do you know what the name is of the domestic cat is that's born without a tail? Its tail is told. Back to sort of contemporary history, hmm, well, late 1800s, turn of the 20th century. What is Pat Garrett known for? What do you know the name Pat Garrett? That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to put on any fancy little accents, nothing like that. What is Pat Garrett known for? Next one. We go to the United Kingdom, and we ask you, the Tower of London is guarded by soldiers who dress rather strangely. Um, it, it adds to the impact of the whole thing. And that outfit that they wear has been around for, for lots and lots of time. So... Um, what is the name of the soldiers who guard the Tower of London? Yep. What is the name of the soldiers who guard the Tower of London? I just want to check something here. I know, quite right. Ah, I missed a question. But it doesn't matter because it relates to the Tower of London. Trees back. Stephen Fry is doing a quiz at 7.30. I'm going to give it a go. It's 7.30 tonight. That's Irish time. So, Denise, you can do it. Go for it. Stephen Fry, one of my favorite presenters, and a very, very sharp man. I've got some of his books as well. Um, so I'm going to throw back in question number 25 because I missed it, but it also relates to the Tower of London um, sort of thing. Big Ben, which is very near the Tower of London, the big clock. In what tower is Big Ben? What is the name of the tower that Big Ben is in? You see, I didn't even know that. They were all different. So question 27, we'll throw in a, a quick, easy one, like a rapid-fire one, just because who starred 
with Jim Carrey in Dumb and Dumber. Who played the other guy in Dumb and Dumber alongside Jim Carrey? Um, sorry, 8.30 our time. So, Denise, we're going to have to rush on so that uh, you can get ready for Stephen Fry. Um, I'm sure he's not going to be as friendly to you as I as I am and the rest of your friends here that, that talk to you. You let us know, though. So, who starred with Jim Carrey in Dumb and Dumber? Here's another interesting one. <laughs> Leon Schuster. <laughs> I like that. You can give yourself half a point, Jesse, for that one. Question number 28. Listen to me carefully. Who is Billy Jean Bezaidnot? I could say Billy Jean. Billy Jean Bezaidnot. Who is Billy Jean Bezaidnot? Think about it. It's a little bit of a curved one. Question number 29, literature now. In which book will you find Uriah Heep? Not the rock band, they're still around, but in which book, famous fictional book, will you find Uriah Heep? And then question number 30, between which two teams is the boat race competed? The boat race, that's what it's called. Somebody sat down, the marketing team sat down and said, what should we call this boat race? And they said, we'll call it the boat race. Yeah. <laughs> so that was question number 30. So it's quarter past. We, we might even do this, guys, but maybe we'll have to go just five and go to questions to 35, and let's see how we go. Question number 21 was, what does a cappella mean? Well, what is a cappella? A cappella music is singing. It's songs that are sung unaccompanied. No instruments or the instrumentation noises are made by the voices of the people. A cappella. Great stuff. I enjoy it. Without musical instruments. That's right. There was a series on television a few years ago called The Sing-Off in which the top American a cappella groups yeah, performed and um, there's a group called Pentatonics who won the one year, who are still multi-million se album sellers and still performing now, and they are fantastic. And it's not old people's music. It's not all sort of fuddy-duddy. Um, boat race is rhyming slang for face. Denise, there you go, rhyming slang. Love it. Yeah, so um, that is the interesting point about a cappella. We went on to ask you, what is a hurdy-gurdy? I said, it isn't the big thingy at an amusement park. It again stays with things musical. A hurdy-gurdy, and I didn't know this either, and I thought I knew everything. Hurdy-gurdy is an instrument. It's a stringed instrument, which is used by producing a hand crank turn wheel rubbing against the strings, and it functions like a violin bow, but then you also have keys that you depress to make it work. Good grief. No wonder there are a lot of, not a lot of people playing nerdy goodies. Wow. Do you know anyone that has a soundboard, all sorts of things? Um, so it's like a mixture between a, a small accordion and guitar -y type thing. No wonder they call it a hurdy gurdy because very odd. But I'm sure it's wonderful. If you've got one and you play it, please, I don't mean you any disrespect whatsoever. Question number 23. What is the name of the breed of cat that is born without a tail? Not talking about having its tail cropped, which they don't do anymore anyway, thankfully. What type of cat is one that's known? Rod, it is a manx. Do you think Rod knows he's not supposed to be answering over there? Doesn't matter though, yeah. A manx cat, a scared cat, yes. From the Isle of Man, Manx cats, due to, um, what they say? Occur naturally occurring mutation that shortens the tail. So there you go. Question number 24. For what do we know the name Pat Garrett? What did Pat Garrett do? Not Pat Cash, the tennis player. Pat Garrett lived a lot more earlier than Pat Cash. Pat Garrett, if I'd said Sheriff Pat Garrett, he was the man who shot Billy the Kid. That's what Pat Garrett did. I'm Pat Garrett, I've got Billy the Kid. Yeah, he did. 
And he wrote a book about it, became quite famous. So there we go. 25, and this is the one that I missed, you see. So I'll ask it again first. The tower that Big Ben is in, what is it called? It's not Big Ben's tower either. And it was originally called just the clock tower. Then all of a sudden in 2012, the Queen had a diamond a, a jubilee. It's now called the Elizabeth Tower. The Elizabeth Tower is what happened to the clock tower where Big Ben is. So that is Big Ben is in the Elizabeth Tower. And then I said, just down the road, you've got uh, the Tower of London. And what is the name of the guards who dress in that very ornate outfit um, with lances and stuff, which I don't know how effective it is against modern weapons, but they seem to be doing okay. They are the yeomen. The yeoman orders, or they're more commonly known as, and if you've got this either way, you're right, beef eaters. The yeoman wardens, orders, wardens, oh, they're also wardens because there's a prison there, but beef eaters or the yeoman orders. Question 27, who played opposite Jim Carrey and is also a petticoat? Denise, you are full of information. Stephen Fry is just going to love you. He really is. You can tell Stephen that I said, you have to be on his panel, however that works. Well done. I didn't know that either. Uh, but there we are. I learned something every second. So question number 27 was, who played opposite Jim Carrey in Dumb and Dumber? It was Jeff Daniels. Jeff Daniels. Um, very, very fine. Serious actor as well. So there you go. Question number 28. Did anybody get this? Billy Jean Bezeta note. And as I said, a little bit of a... A little bit unfair, a little bit of a curveball, huh? Is Evita Bezaidnot's daughter? Yes, if you've ever you've been to a Peter Dirk Ace show and Evita Bezaidnot is part of the show, Evita Bezaidnot will very proudly tell you about her child called Billy Jean, Billy Jean Bezaidnot. That was a bit of a, a curvy. You've got to have them every now and again. Are you all still there? Yeah, gone with the wind. Evita's daughter. There yeah, you see. And question number 29, in which book will you find Uriah Heep? And I did say not the rock band. It was, of course, David Copperfield. David Copperfield, not The Illusionist, the original book by Charles Dickens. And question number 30, what two teams compete against each other in the boat race? Hey, Mom, I'm going to watch the boat race. It was, of course, it is, of course. Oxford and Cambridge University. I thought it was called something fancier than that. It's called the boat race. So. How are you doing? That was question number 30. And I think we're only going to be able to do five. So we'll go to 35 and then we'll do rapid fire. Or do you want to have all 40 and no rapid fire? Let me know. But I'm going to start anyway. Where will you find Jaguars? This is, not a, this is not a trick question. I'm not talking about, don't say on the road. Rod got five. How did everybody else do? I'm sorry, I forgot to ask you. How are you doing so far? So far, so good. Good, good, good. Lindywe, five. Anybody else want to tell us how they're doing? Everybody's shy now. Dogs are barking outside. The world is going mad. Um, but we're still here. Those of us who, who managed to hang around, and as I say, that breakdown, wow, that wasn't fun, was it? But things could have been worse. Five, five, five. Denise, eight. Swaziland, not worth mentioning. Okay. Before I mention a word. But you're here. All 40, please. Eight. Michelle, eight. Okay. Let's thunder on and see how we do. We'll, we'll leave the rapid fire out. And Trudy got two. But Trudy, you lost... Contact, contact loss. It's 22 minutes past. We've got eight minutes in which to ask 10 questions and answer them. Let's see how we go. I asked question number 31, where will you find a Jaguar, not on the road, where a, a, a four-legged thing called Jaguar. Here's one that I thought was very interesting. Who is the leading rugby union try scorer in history? And I'll give you this. If you don't know the person's name, just say from what country does the highest try scorer in, in rugby come from? Uh, do you remember the song by Band Aid? It's all right, Michelle. It's all right. 
called Do They Know It's Christmas? Of course you will remember it. It was like the We Are the World of its time. Can you tell me who wrote it? Thought it was rapid fire. No, no, it's not rapid fire. We're just trying to go quickly so that we can get all the questions out. Who wrote Do They Know It's Christmas? And question number 34, here's another one, which is quite fun. Um, I didn't know it, but I thought it was more complicated than it is. What is the capital of Luxembourg? What is the capital of Luxembourg? That very small um, country in the middle of Europe. What is the capital called? What is the capital known as? Question 35. If somebody says, comes to you and says, put your dukes up. Put your dukes or your dukes up. Put your dukes up. What are they inviting you to do? What are they inviting you to do? Question 36. Who rules the Canary Islands? No, it's not Canaries. There are a lot of them. But it's not. Which country governs the Canary Islands? Question number 37. What is the blue in blue cheese? It's not important if you like it. I love it. But what is the blue in blue cheese? Question. Oh, this one I really liked. Traditionally, in a barber shop or outside a barber shop, is there is a pole with three colors. Red, white, and blue. What do they represent? What do they represent? The three colors outside a barbershop. There's a thingy that spins around sometimes inside. And traditionally, a lot of barbershops have these colors. Red, white, and blue. What do they represent? Earlier this week was VE Day. Question number 30 time. 30 time? 30 time. 39. Question number 39 was VE Day. What does VE stand for? What does what does VE stand for? It was VE Day and VJ Day. I just want to know what VE stands for. And last question: um, socio-political. Quite heavy, huh? And think about it carefully, uh, because it's it's not as obvious as I also thought. Who started the Communist Party in Russia? Not the Communist Party. But in Russia, who started the Communist Party in Russia? There you are. 40 questions. We've got five minutes to let you know those answers. And then we won't have rapid fire tonight. We will have them uh, next week. We'll have an extra burst of them. I'll go through some of these quickly, though. Where will you find Jaguars? Yes, um, some require Michel, South America. But they'll also find the southern western states of the U.S. of A as well. Beautiful animals. But yes, in South America as well. Who is the leading rugby union test try scorer? And I said, just give me a country. Give me a country. The highest, the biggest, the most tries for a test team, rugby team, is a gentleman from Japan. His name is Daisuke Ohata, and he scored 69 tries in 58 tests. Brian Habana is number two, but he's not number one. Daisuke Ohata, 69 tries for Japan. Wow. Who wrote the Band-Aid song, Do They Know It's Christmas? Do they know it's Christmas? And if you remember the whole thing, it was a fundraising and everything. So the man who is now Sir, Sir Bob Gildorf, he wrote the words, and a guy by the name of Midge Yeur from a great uh, electronic band from, uh, from the UK in the 80s from Ultravox wrote the music. Yes, Michelle. Bob Gildorf is half right. He wrote the lyrics. And Midge Ewer from Ultravox wrote and produced the music. Question 34. What is the capital city of Luxembourg? It's not rapid fire. I was just waiting for somebody to write it out. But anyway, do you know it's called Luxembourg City? Shoo. Another one of those marketing department marvels. What should we call our capital city? We'll call it Luxembourg City because it's in Luxembourg. And that's what they did. If somebody says to you, invites you to put up your dukes or put up your dukes, put up your dukes, what are they asking you to do? They're actually asking you to have a fight. It's put up your dukes, you see? Put up your dukes. Yeah, a fight. Uh, yeah, a rocky type thing. Question 37, 
What is the blue in blue cheese? And it's not paint. I was told a long time ago that in blue cheese, they put thin copper wire into to create, didn't get gold off wood I didn't get, yes, there we are, Denise. Ah. Spain, Rod? Spain for what? Mold. Mold, mold, mold. Oath. Oh, and sucks. Rod, no, 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 no. I know some people don't like I love blue cheese. But it is, Michelle is, is it basically right, mold. Um, it's, uh, it is the mold of penicillium. It's cultures of mold that you put into it. Old socks. It wouldn't sell that well, Rod, if they said, would you like some old sock cheese? So, there we go. Question 38, and it's 28 minutes after eight, so all the eights are lining up. What do the three colors signify? 36 canaries. Did I miss one again? No, not yet, not yet. Uh, did I? I, I, I have, yes, I did, I did. Oh. Slap that hand. Quick one, who rules the Canary Islands was 36. When we had that little bit of a thing, we lost a lot of stuff here. Um, who rules the Canary Islands? And somebody put the answer in there anyway. Rod was Spain. You're quite right. Quite right. Spain, Canary Islands. The three stripes, question number 38. The three colored stripes in a barbershop or outside a barbershop. It's an interesting one. Well, I think it's interesting. Long time ago, even before me, barbershops were also sort of places where you could be assisted if you weren't, if you had some sort of ailments or whatever. They did dentistry. They pulled teeth. Yeah, can you believe it? Um, and they also did bleeding. Um, that, that was a... a a type of cure that people had if you had something wrong with you, um, they, you they would let bloodletting it was called. <clears throat> so they put the sign outside to let people know that they would happily do some bloodletting, which was the red, or pull some teeth, which was the white, or if you were lucky, they'd cut your hair and that was the blue, that was the sort of um, shave that was the alternate color if nothing else was needed they'd give you a shave quickly how nice i'm so glad that uh, it's just symbolic now and you don't get your teeth pulled out every time you go for a haircut but at the moment i think i'll be prepared to take a, a, a sort of you know take my chances question number 39 what does ve stand for it was held on the 8th of may it stands for the end of the second world war the war in europe victory Oh, in Europe, VE, Victory Europe, and it was the 8th of May. Um, Catherine thought I said jeans. Oh, blue jeans. Oh, I see. Victory in Europe. I like that. I like that. Um, we'll do a jeans one sometime, Catherine, I promise. VE Day, Victory in Europe, VJ Day, which is, I think, in October this year, is Victory over Japan and the total end of the Second World War. <clears throat> My last question was sociopolitical, as I said. Who started the Communist Party in Russia? And that was Vladimir Lenin in 1903. Catherine, red for blood, white for bandit. No, don't know blue. White for teeth, Catherine. And there you are. Yes, they were. And there we have it. We've, we've overrun a little bit. Well, not that there's, you know, but I see some people have left already. Um, so we're not going to have the final rapid fire tonight. And I hope you guys had fun. Those of you who came back and returned, Cheryl, we got four. That's cool. Four out of ten. Through all that, through all that mess, you managed to pick yourselves up again. Um, the English barber poles are only red and white. Symbolize bloody bandages, especially during surgery. their surgical skills. Yeah. I know. I know. I think there's some, no, I won't go down there. Rod six, Trudy three, Cheryl says thank you, Swazikon got two, everybody out there. We all won tonight because we all stayed with one another. We had a great time. Again, I apologize for something completely out of my control. Hopefully on Monday, it will all be crystal clear and clean and smart, and we will have some more fun 
um, and to Michelle, thank you to you, and to you and to you, and especially also to you. Um, so because we lost people, we haven't had any people voting on the name of the rooster. So again, on Monday night, 7.30, I'll drop all those suggested names in, and you can give me your votes. From me to you, have a great weekend. It's Friday tomorrow. Take care. And uh, yeah, Nasli, your connection bad. Uh, uh, it must have been a generic thing that a lot of people suffered from tonight. And if I could fix it, I promise I will. But as I was saying, from me to you guys until Monday, unless something changes, and then we will say we'll put that up on IRL. Um, but 7.30 Monday evening on IRL's YouTube channel, it'll be you and us and me and the dog and everybody. Seeing how clever we are or aren't, we're all having fun. Take care. Be kind to one another and be blessed. And from me, cheers. <laughs>